this was in PGT in biology. As in the previous sessions, we have discussed about genetic engineering and what are the principles of genetic engineering and uh, how the genetic engineering will be helpful for the production of food in plants and uh, how it will be used in uh, uh, bi uh, biotechnology and its application in agriculture and also in the medicine and uh, uh, and also in other applications which are pro for producing the drugs and transgenic plants. So today I'm going to discuss about the the some of the important terminology, the tissue culture. So tissue culture, how what is this uh, tissue culture and how it plays a, a major role? So in the biotechnology, as uh, we have studied about genetic engineering and the different steps in the genetic engineering, and in the same way, the uh, tissue culture also play a major role. Uh, in culturing of different varieties of the plants, not only plants and different organisms also grown by using the process of tissue culture. So what is the importance of this tissue culture is uh, tissue culture play a major role in uh, in the less time, more number of products, more number of uh, products are going to be produced in the plants. And also we can able to produce a disease resistant varieties and uh, we can able to maintain a, the, the responsible, so the gene which are the plant which is having with the desirable characters that can be grown in a short term with the more uh, short time with more number. So this uh, tissue culture is going to be taken place in in vitro conditions. So in vitro conditions means in the laboratory conditions. So a traditional breeding techniques. Yeah, tissue culture is playing a major role for the development of crop and uh, the biotechnology, the uh, tissue culture technique in the biotechnology, the, it, uh, it is an advanced uh, uh, thing over here. So the whole plant is going to be generated by using a single cell or some of the, some times by using a tissue. The some of the times the cell is also taken into consideration, culturing of the cell results into tissue and tissue is going to be generated the total plant. So for that, for culturing of the total plant, for development of the total plant in the sterile conditions. So we need to take some of the precautions to grow that particular plant. So we have to maintain the sterile conditions, required temperature, required uh, nutrient medium, everything. So from the small, the single tissue, the whole plant is going to be generated. So this uh, capacity to generate whole plant from any cell or explant is called totipotency. So what is this explant? So explant is nothing but what the tissue or the cell we have uh, selected to grow in in vitro conditions. So in the in vitro condition which we have selected, so that is called uh, explant. So explant is nothing but a, a small part that can be taken, that can be selected to grow as a complete plant. So what is this totipotency means? Any part of the plant taken out and grown in a test tube. So under sterile conditions in a specific, special nutrient medium. So here explant is taken and that must be taken into a sterile mediums, which is containing the nutrients like hormones, vitamins, uh, the nutrients which are required for the growth of the plant. So by the giving of this all the required environment for the particular explant, the explant is going to be generate whole plant. So this capacity, the capacity to generate a whole plant from a uh, explant is called totipotency. The totipotency plays a major role over here. So totipotency is the capacity to, it is a capacity to generate a whole plant from any cell or explant. So the explant may be tissue or explant may be some of the cells which are present in the plant. So this all we, we have to do in the laboratory condition that is called in vitro conditions. So by doing this in vitro conditions, we can able to produce uh, different uh, pro, so the plant which is having you know, some of the plants they containing much uh, much nutrients in them and uh, uh, or some of the plants they contain the um, uh, character as a good character like uh, growing in a, um, the leaves which are required so that leaves are grown very well so that type of plants we have to select uh, desirable characters the plants with desirable characters has to be selected and some of the times we use the tissue culture technique uh, for many times this question was asked uh, to 
produce disease free varieties which technique we use means at the meristematic region so as uh, the the plant is having zones so in the meristematic zone there will be producing the new cells every time so here the tip of the stem so this zone is meristematic zone at this zone new cells are going to be produced every time even the plant is with the disease the diseased plant is with the desirable characters so this is plant this plant is having some desirable characters but this plant got a disease so to i to get the disease free, free plant what we will do is we will select the meristematic tissue which which has not got that particular disease and this is grown in in vitro culturing so in vitro culturing means we take the test tube or some of the uh, conical flies so sometimes we use conical flies and sometimes we use test tubes so in the test tubes we will uh, give all the nutrient medium so that along with the uh, some of the uh, some of the hormones and nutrients uh, so which are required for the plant so that should be taken and uh, vitamins in organic salts uh, and uh, growth regulators so growth regulators are nothing but the plant hormones so phyto hormones if we are growing the plant so we have to take uh, the particular amounts of this plant hormone so the ratio we must take according to the ratio if the root must be developed the root uh, the hormone must be taken into consideration so auxins and cytokines they play a major role so auxins uh, most of the times auxins they are responsible for giving the root and cytokines they develop shoot so they should be given in a particular ratio to generate a root and shoot in particular medium so here the test tube is uh, taken and uh, that test tube has to be uh, taken with the nutrient medium agar agar especially and different inorganic salts and organic salts and uh, vitamins amino acids which are required for the growth of that particular plant so what is going to be happen so that tissue which has selected that is going to be sterilized again so the, they have to be cleaned the sterilization techniques by using different sterilization techniques like laminar pro chamber um, by giving the uv rays the microorganisms if it is anything is there that is going to be killed by using different techniques and this meristematic tissue is going to be grown in this particular medium so the in the medium this tissue is to be uh, incorporated so that is uh, nothing but uh, we are uh, inoculating the tissue in the medium so due to inoculation what is going to be happen the number of cells in this uh, particular tissue is going to be increased from the tissue when we add up uh, particular uh, amino acids and particular hormones the total plant is going to be generated by this uh, um, the small tissue the tissue whatever we have taken so this is nothing but the micro propagation so according to the number of plants we require we have to grow in that particular number in the um, test tubes and that must be acclimatized later so acclimatization means uh, the adapting this uh, test tube in vitro plants uh, on the land and we can able to use later so this is the technique we use uh, in the tissue culture technique so in the tissue culture technique we have to isolate a particular tissue especially disease free tissue and disease free plants must be taken first if the disease free diseased plant is having particular trait so that is uh, useful for us that we have to take it from the meristematic tissue of that particular diseased plant and that must be sterilized and that must be utilized for the growth of the total plant so here this uh, uh, we have to achieve propagation of a large number of plants in very short duration so what are the advantage they will be giving the statements what are the advantages of uh, this uh, particular tissue culture so the micro propagation this is also called micro propagation so here the main function is uh, in the propagation of a large number of plants in very short duration large number of plants can be taken within very short duration so that is going to be taken place by the tissue culture technique so within short time less place more number of plants can be produced so this is nothing but um, this is also called uh, micro propagation micro means small so within very short time 
very less space more number of desired plants can be able to grow by using the tissue culture whatever the plant which is produced in vitro conditions uh, by the tissue culture they are same like the plants which are uh, the mother plant uh, the from where we have taken the particular tissue so not only tissue culture some of the times the cell culturing is also taken place and uh, some of the times uh, we can use uh, different parts of that particular uh, protoplasm cytoplasm fusion is also going to be taken place in this uh, techniques so how it is going to be taken place so each of these plants will be genetically identical identical to the original plant from which they were grown they are called soma clones so soma clones means they are completely identical to the mother plant or mother tissue from where we have taken that particular tissue so completely the uh, same characters like uh, vegetative reproduction and uh, asexual mode of reproduction so in the asexual mode of reproduction and vegetative mode of reproduction what is going to be happen the progeny which are produced the offspring which are produced are like same like the mother plant in the same way here also the plants which are going to be produced by this technique uh, tissue culture technique the plants which are going to be produced are same like the mother tissue from where we have taken mother plant uh, from where we have taken the tissue so those are called soma clones so what are the characteristics of tissue culture means they will be asking many times they have asked uh, different statement has uh, given identify the odd one out identify the correct statement from the following like that so from the tissue culture with the less time more number of plants can be produced yes so uh, short uh, space within less space more number of plants can be produced yes so this is also called a micro propagation this is also called micro propagation and uh, these are uh, used uh, and uh, to produce the soma clones so they will be using the term soma clones soma clones is nothing but it is same it is identical to the mother so the whatever the tissue we have taken uh, the plant uh, from which we have taken the particular tissue so the they they use the term soma clones at that time we have to understand soma clones are nothing but so these are genetically identical uh, identical to the original plant from which they were grown so if they are genetically identified uh, so identical physical makeup of that particular plant is also same anyway these are uh, genetically identical so next uh, so we can able to produce the fusion of uh, um, different protoplasms so many important foods like tomato banana apple have been produced on commercial scale using this method so when we want to uh, produce a tomato plant so potato plant so uh, so apple banana so fruit plants uh, so they for the commercial use we have to grow we have to choose this tissue culture technique so many plants can be generated within less time and more product is going to be obtained a large scale production is going to be taken place first uh, in in vitro conditions micro propagation is going to be taken place large variety of large number of plants with the same variety is going to be produced that must be acclimatized later so yeah so another important application of this method is the recovery of healthy plants from the diseased plants as i have discussed so here uh, even if the plant is infected with the virus the meristem is free of virus as we discussed so epical meristem axillary meristem they are free of especially epical meristem is uh, free of that particular virus or bacteria the disease so hence uh, one can remove the meristem grow in in vitro to obtain virus free plants so they have succeeded uh, in the meristem in meristem culturing of banana sugarcane and potato etc tomato so many uh, disease free resistant varieties have grown, uh, have grown uh, by using this tissue culture technique so next uh, we can also isolate the protoplast protoplast is nothing but without the cell wall so without the cell wall in the plants without the cell wall along with the cell membrane we can able to collect that particular cell and uh, we can able to fuse the particular cells whatever we have collected so here so scientists have given isolated singles from uh, single cells from plants 
and after digesting their cell wall have been able to isolate naked protoplast. Uh, so naked protoplast is nothing but the cytoplasm which is surrounded by the plasma membrane. So this is going to be isolated. The isolated protoplast from two different varieties of plants, each having desirable character. So two uh, protoplasts which are having desirable characters, they will be taking and they will be collecting and they will be isolated and uh, they can be fused to get hybrid protoplast. This uh, technique to produce the hybrids uh, of a new plant is called uh, so somatic hybridization and uh, the produced hybrids are called somatic hybrids. So the process is called somatic hybridization and the, the plants which are going to be produced are called somatic hybrids. So very, 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 very important. What are somatic hybrids and what are the somatic hybridization? Somatic hybridization is nothing but we have to isolate naked protoplast. So naked protoplast is nothing but the cell with the, um, the cell with the, along with the cell uh, cytoplasm or other remaining cell or cell organelles remaining, everything is present in the cell along with the cell membrane or plasma membrane. So that is going to be isolated and uh, they have, so we have to collect it, two different plants with the desirable characters and we have to take it out both from both the plants protoplast has to be isolated and fusion of protoplast is going to be taken place so the fusion of that particular protoplast is called somatic hybridization the hybrids which are produced are called somatic hybrids so the tissue culture play a major role in this way also so for generating the uh, varieties with the desired characters so here the the protoplast of tomato is fused with the potato then they are grown to form new hybrid plants combining tomato and potato characters so uh, it has done so in the ninth standard also you have uh, seen and uh, you have did i think so by doing that we can able to produce so and so we can able to produce the pomato plant so that these are the plants containing the characters of both the potato and the tomato. So these potato and tomato both are belonging to the uh, same family, the Solanaceae. So family is same, but the, the genus and species is different. Pomato, sorry, uh, for pomato, the characters which are having in the potato and tomato, we can able to observe. So by uh, by doing this uh, technique, somatic hybridization technique, new varieties of plants are going to be produced. And uh, we can able to, so if the genetic makeup of a particular plant is good, means uh, it can able to produce the characters of good characters, it can be developed in a proper way so by using the tissue culture. With less time, more amount of plants and more amount of product is going to be generated uh, by using this tissue culture technique. So not, not only that, uh, we can also produce transgenic plants. So transgenic plants means uh, we can able to produce transgenic crop plants having resistant to pathogen and pest. So we have discussed about Bt cotton and uh, some of the fight of the infestants. So this is a pathogens we have to, uh, so that will be cleared by using this technique and not only that uh, to transgenic uh, plants suitable for food processing technology so we can also develop different plants uh, with uh, so which are used in food uh, plants uh, suitable for food processing technology for example transgenic tomato so that is flower sour so flower sour is the variety of the plant so So this is the plant. So this is going to be, uh, this is a blues resistant variety. So it can able to suitable for storage and transport due to delayed ripening and uh, offers long shelf life. So here, the tomato must be transported from one place to another place. That is one, one thing. And uh, it will be ripened very fast. So local uh, varieties of the tomatoes, their ripening will be very fast. So this uh, uh, Flavor sour, so it is a re resistant, bruise resistant variety where it is very suitable for storage and transport. So for storage also, it is very suitable and transport, transport also taken place due to unripening. So ripening is not very fast. So delay, delay the ripening of the fruit, the tomato is going to be taken place. Then uh, storage and transport will be easy for that particular um, tomato to uh, to reach different places of that variety. So here, 
the transgenic tomato so that is flavor sour it is a bruise resistant variety so it is suitable for so wh what it is uh, suitable so here it is suitable for um, uh, this uh, uh, storage and transport so and uh, we can also see so 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 transgenic plants with improved nutritional value so uh, here this is the question many times asked so the golden variety of rice so that is type e variety so it is rich with vitamin a and uh, prevents blindness so the golden rice which is going to be obtained from type e is rich in vitamin a and prevents blindness so this variety is used in many countries. So to produce this one, we have used this particular tissue culture technique. So that is transgenic golden rice. The transgenic golden rice is having uh, much nutritional value. And uh, this is the type E. It is rich with vitamin A. And uh, this is having the, this is going to reduce the blindness in the people. So next, uh, transgenic plants useful for hybrid seed production. So the hybrid seeds, many hybrid seeds are going to be produced here. The male sterile plants of Brassica nipus are produced. So this will eliminate the problem of manual emasculation and reduce the cost of hybrid seed production. So here, emasculation. Emasculation means uh, removing of uh, anthers. So anthers is going to produce the male gamete that is going to be removed by using emasculation technique. So that will be taken place. That will be taken place by by doing this uh, hybridization technique brassica nipus actually the flowers are very small in that case so to do emasculation to go for cross pollination of per particular flower it will be very hard very difficult so whenever we use this technique male sterile plants are going to be produced so this will eliminate the problem of manual emasculation so man must be emasculated so we have to remove the anthers and to create a, uh, only single uh, unisexual flower over there. So uni, this is a bisexual. We have to make it into unisexual to reduce the uh, cross poll sorry self pollination. So for that, the male sterile plants of Brassica nipus are going to be produced. So this will eliminate the problem of manual emasculation and reduce the cost of hybrid seed production. And next one is uh, transgenic plants tolerant to abiotic stress. Abiotic stress is caused by chemicals, coal, rot, salt, heat. So as we discussed, so some of the basmati variety of rice was made resistant against biotic and abiotic stresses. So and, uh, and uh, one of the roundup uh, ready soya bean is herbicide tolerant. So this can be taken place So next, so different varieties of the plants are going to be produced by using this uh, technique of genetic engineering and the tissue culture. The main advantages are So made crops more tolerant to abiotic stresses, cold, rot, salt and heat and reduce reliance on chemical pesticides and help to reduce post-harvest losses. So uh, harvest losses can be um, reduced and increase efficiency of minerals usage by plants and enhance nutritional values of food, golden lines, example, vitamin A. And so and uh, we can able to produce the disease resistant uh, uh, varieties of the plants and the disease free plants can be developed with, with very less time short time more number of plants are going to be produced so next uh, bio safety and ethical issues so bio safety and ethical issues so different varieties of uh, So, biosafety and ethical issues. 
So here we can able to uh, generate uh, ethical issues are also there. So whenever we ident we observe a person, uh, the approach ni with the characters of the mother or father, we feel so the mother or father feel very happy to recognize the um, the similarities of that particular progeny and uh, uh, the traits are going to be passed from one generation to another generation for some of the times. So this genetic engineering technology makes the deletion of the local varieties. So local varieties, the, some of the genes which are responsible for the characters of local uh, variety is going to be removed by this. Some of the times it is going to be removed by this technique. So here, bio, um, there is a far of transferring of allergens or toxins to humans and animals uh, as side effects. So as we are doing the manipulation in the uh, normal genetic makeup of that particular plant or particular animal, this may create a problems. And there is a risk of changing the fundamental nature of vegetables. So the main basic character, some of the times, uh, the basic nature of that particular vegetable or uh, plant is going to be uh, reduced. And uh, next one is, so there is a uh, more, po many pose a harmful effects on biodiversity and have an adverse impact on environment. So biodiversity of the particular environment, so environment is going to be changed. So biodiversity is not going to be maintained. Why? Because there is a change in particular um, food chain. So by changing the food chain, what is going to be happen? Food web is going to be disturbed and the food chain, food web disturbs. So bio, bio, biosphere is going to be disturbed. So biodiversity is going to be disturbed and the biodiversity uh, makes the sense of whole uh, nature. So this is going to be... Uh, play adverse impact on the nature, especially the environment, because by changing different uh, abiotic and biotic components. So biotic components, if the biotic components like uh, uh, animals, plants are going to be changed and uh, it depend upon the abiotic components only. So automatically utilization of these abiotic components is, will be changing. So that makes the change. So there is a risk of gene pollution due to transfer of new genes into related wild species through natural outcrossing. So this may result in the development of super weeds. Some of the time super weeds are going to be created. So that will be grown very fast and we cannot resist. So restrict to that one. And the more resistant crops are uh, weedy sites has to be produced for that. So much super weeds are going to be produced by this technique some of the times by altering the genes. So they may be bring about changes in natural and evolutionary pattern. So by changing the biodiversity, the automatically evolutionary pattern is also going to be changed. So evolution and uh, next, uh, these are the some of the disadvantages by using this and the uh, biopiracy. So this is a very important terminology, the biopiracy. So this biopiracy is the time used to refer the use of biological resources by multinational companies and other organizations without proper authorization from the countries and people concerned without compensatory payment. So here what is going to be happen? So this uh, biopiracy is going to be taken place uh, in different countries, especially in the uh, well-developed countries. What they will do, they collect the uh, main resources from uh, different uh, undeveloped and developing countries. So the raw product is from these uh, countries and uh, they will get the patent, uh, they will get the patent, advanced countries. They produce the product uh, in a different way by using different technology. And some of the times the same product is going to be generated, but they will apply for, they, they are going to apply for the patent and they will be getting the patent. So that makes the, uh, so this is nothing but uh, the biological resources are going to be um, what uh, robbed so by using this uh, uh, biopiracy so without the author proper authorization from the countries and people concerned without compensatory payment they won't pay uh, compensatory payment and they will be getting the patent so this uh, is going to be done in the biopiracy so most of the industrialized nations are rich financially but poor in biodiversity and traditional knowledge so india is with much uh, biodiversity and the traditional knowledge so like uh, uh, like uh, by using different products uh, from our country so the foreign countries the well advanced countries they are storing the theme of uh, sorry uh, the traditional knowledge 
So they collect the traditional knowledge and they will be getting the patent. So in contrast, the developing and the undeveloped world rich in biodiversity and traditional knowledge related to bioresources, traditional knowledge related to bioresources can be exploited. So they exploit, uh, so this is going to be exploited to develop modern applications and can also be used to save time, effort and expend expenditure during this commercialization. They will be giving a very small change to that particular product and they will be selling there by taking into taking patent. So there has been growing realization of the injustice, inadequate compensation and benefit sharing between developed and developing countries. Therefore, some nations are developing laws to prevent such unauthorized exploitation. So DOPD, so that is going to be uh, reduced, that is going to be removed of uh, regarding these bio resources and the traditional knowledge. So in, in India, Indian Parliament has recently declared, so cleared um, the second amendment of the Indian patent bills that take such as uh, such issues into consideration, including patent terms, emergency provisions, and research and developmental initiatives. So they play major role. So the Indian Parliament they have also taken uh, amendments uh, in the Indian patent bills. So it uh, reduces the uh, exploitation of bio resources and the traditional knowledge of our country so so by this uh, um, we can able to conclude this uh, biotechnology and its applications so biotechnology and applications has uh, been um, i think i have shared uh, in a better way to understand by you people so now we will check out some of the questions which are related to this So in the tomorrow sessions, so that we will be checking these questions, especially. So which part of the plant is best suited for making virus-free plants and why? So the meristem culturing is the best suited way. So where the viruses will be, the meristem is free of viruses because it is going to be generated newly every time in the tip of the stem. So what is the major advantage of producing the plants by micropropagation? In the micropropagation, less time, it's the same variety can be produced within less time, short space, uh, less space, more number of plants are going to be produced. So um, find out what the va various components of the medium used for propagation of the explant in, it for, in vitro are. So there are uh, medium uh, is going to be uh, with an uh, inorganic organic salts and uh, uh, next uh, hormones so phytohormones are going to be given and along with uh, some of the disease resistant uh, uh, some of the times we also had some of the disease resistant varieties over there so next uh, crystals of bt called bt toxin produced by some bacteria do not kill the bacteria themselves because they're protoxins as we discussed the toxin is uh, uh, inactive so whenever it enters into the gut of the um, gut of the microbe so it is going to be activated by the ph of the gut of that particular so bacteria resistant to the toxin no so toxin is immature no toxin is inactive so protoxin is going to be produced and next so uh, by this, uh, we can able to conclude, uh, I can conclude the topic of uh, biotechnology and its applications. So in the applications of biotechnology, we, we have seen uh, agrochemical based agriculture, organic agriculture, genetically engineered crop based agriculture. And we have termed about uh, Green Revolution, who is the father of Green Revolution, Norman Borlaug, and uh, coined the term Green Revolution, William God, in 1968. So along with the Green Revolution, uh, this uh, gene revolution has also taken into consideration to improve the um, more number of plants in uh, less time. So we have to use uh, di different techniques to um, improve this. So by this, I can conclude biotechnology and its applications. So next, uh, we, will give, we will be going for plants, microbes, and human welfare. So in that uh, strategies for an enhancement in uh, food production and what is plant breeding, 
So plant breeding for disease resistance and uh, in the next uh, session, plant breeding for developing resistance to insect pest uh, and uh, plant breeding for improved uh, food quality and uh, single cell uh, single cell proteins and uh, in detail flow chart of tissue culture. So everything we will be observing in the ne uh, next session along with the microbes in human welfare. So different microbes are using in uh, human welfare. Um, so especially we have discussed about some of the microorganisms over there. So biofertilizers, how it is helpful and everything I'll be continuing the next session. Thank, thank you for giving this wonderful opportunity.